Fiji High Commissioner to New Zealand, Your Excellency the New Zealand High Commissioner to Fiji, the Chairman and Chief Executive of Investment Fiji, members of our respective business communities, ladies and gentlemen, Bula Benaka and a good more, very good morning to you all. I'm uh, delighted to be here in New Zealand, of course, for my first official visit to the country and to address this uh, Trade and Investment Symposium, the first, the very first of my engagements over the next few days. And the fact that it is the first engagement underlines the importance my government places on expanding our trade with New Zealand as uh, part of our wider push to take Fiji's trade with the world to another level. New Zealand is a very important market for us, and let me begin by giving you all a brief snapshot of why. Two-way trade in goods and services on, a, on average is worth almost 700 million Fijian dollars a year. And in, in terms of our tourism industry and Fiji's biggest revenue earner, New Zealand is our second largest source market with more than 120,000 Kiwi visitors each year contributing more than $200 million to the Fijian economy. New Zealand visitor arrivals are increasingly buoyant. In fact, over the past two years, we've seen the largest increase from New Zealand of any of our markets. And uh, provisional monthly arrivals in August were up 15% over the same period last year to reach a total of more than 20,000. So more Kiwis, more New Zealanders are visiting Fiji with all that entails for the prosperity of our tourism uh, sector. And as you will discover as the day proceeds, the opportunities for New Zealanders to invest in Fiji and strengthen our overall trading relationships has also never been better. Last Friday, I addressed a similar trade and investment symposium in Sydney. And uh, while there are some differences between the Australian and uh, New Zealand markets, there are also some striking similarities in terms of the overall investment climate. And not least is the dramatic improvement in the quality of Fiji's uh, political and diplomatic engagement with both New Zealand and Australian governments, which is uh, finally beginning to match the excellent people-to-people -people ties that have always existed between our peoples. As many of you already know, I will be having my second bilateral meeting uh, with uh, Prime Minister John Key. I want to say in advance of the meeting that I deeply appreciated Mr. Key's gesture in coming to Suva back in June, where we had our first encounter and were able to give the Prime Minister a warm Fijian welcome. I was uh, especially gratified to be able to convey to him, face to face, the absolute gratitude of the Fijian people for New Zealand's assistance in the wake of tropical cyclone Winston back in February. The arrival in Fiji of so many Kiwi men and women in uniform aboard your aircraft in HMS uh, Canterbury was deeply appreciated. And the uh, caring, can-do attitude to help Fijians in the affected areas back on their feet is something we will never forget. It's, uh, Unfortunate that some of the New Zealand media reporting of the Prime Minister's visit back, to, back in June suggested that I had given Mr. Key a hard time. It's true that I politely outlined to him the reasons why we had uh, chosen to embark on a radical program in 2006 to create uh, a level playing field for every Fijian and that we had fulfilled our promise to refund, uh, return Fiji to parliamentary rule in the election of September 2014. I also said that it was a shame that New Zealand, Australia and certain other countries had failed to understand what we were trying to do, which was trying to introduce genuine democracy for the first time in Fiji and guarantee the rights of every Fijian in the 2013 constitution. Yet far from being the insult that some members of the media chose to cast it as, I think uh, John Key understood that the speech I made was merely outlining our position and that no disrespect was intended. The indignation was on the part of some of the New Zealand media, not the Prime Minister, and undoubtedly because I also criticised their unrelenting 
uh, unrelentingly negative and unbalanced reporting of events in Fiji. Uh, but away from their gaze, the atmosphere between John Key and I personally was very cordial, and we got on famously. It's true that uh, I've had a couple of issues with him, seeing that I'd shot my mouth off about the Pacific Islands Forum, uh, that he hoped we weren't going to be silly about enforcing the provision of our public order. <coughs> but it hasn't uh, unduly affected the warmth of our relationship. He knows that I'm frank by name and frank by nature. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that uh, he's a similarly plain speaking Kiwi, which is undoubtedly why the New Zealand people keep voting back into office. <clears throat> so we're big enough to say what we think and then move on. And I want to thank him for being a straight shooter, for not taking things too personally, and especially for giving me the opportunity to get together with him again in New Zealand and enjoy each other's company. In the similar rough and tumble of the British Low Cup uh, match that we will be attending together in Eden Park on Sunday night, I was uh, told by someone in, New in Australia that I should wear the Wallabies uh, scarf. I said that I would be a very brave Prime Minister wearing a wallaby cap in front of John Key <laughs> playing the All Blacks. <laughs> but this time it will be the Kiwis and uh, Aussies slugging it out and uh, no one can blame me for anything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I also come with a message for the New Zealand media. Now that the bans on individual uh, journeys visiting Fiji have been lifted, you yeah, are welcome, most welcome, without exception. To visit Fiji like the journalists of other countries. You are free to report without restriction once you've been accredited in the same usual way by our Department of Information. And all we ask that you cover events fairly and in a balanced manner, which is the obligation of journalists the world over. I hope you will come and see for yourselves the progress we have made on the back of seven straight years of economic growth, the longest in Fijian history and to see for yourselves that our institutions of state are functioning properly and we are strengthening those institutions as we move forward to ensure that they are truly independent and free from political and personal influence as happened far too often in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, I've come to New Zealand from Australia. As I said, where there's already been a dramatic improvement in the quality of our official relationship. A month ago, I had the pleasure of a very cordial meeting in New York with the Australian Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull. We've agreed to take our personal relationship and the relationship between our governments to another level. And my agenda on this New Zealand visit is precisely the same in relation to John Key and his ministers, to strengthen the quality of our engagement and bring our nations even closer together. Of course, we will always have our differences, uh, such as on the Pesa Plus trade negotiations, but I believe these differences can be worked out through much more effectively in this new era of goodwill. Because as I said in Sydney, now more than ever, given the uncertain global outlook, uh, nations with shared histories and values must stick together. We must never allow those things that divide us to take precedence over the things that bind us together and especially when Fiji and New Zealand share a particular corner of the world and share the warm personal links between our peoples. Let me repeat what I said about PESA, PESA Plus last week before I move on to other things, because I know many of you in the room are seeking clarification on Fiji's position in relation to these important negotiations. Fiji has emphatically not withdrawn from PESA Plus. We are still at the table, Yet neither are we prepared to sign the document in its current form because we simply don't believe in, in uh, I believe that it is in our interest to do so. Uh, on two critical issues, uh, infant, uh, infant in industry development and most favored nation status, we believe the current legal text not only fails to meet our requirements, if implemented, it would have an adverse impact on our development and the development of our Pacific Island neighbors. Fiji wants an enduring, predictable, and sustainable trade agreement between New Zealand and Australia on the one hand, and the Pacific Islands on the other. And in our view, 
we still have not got one in this negotiations thus far. The current document is uh, too one-sided, too restrictive, places too many obligations on us that we cannot afford to meet. We need more flexibility, a recognition that we are a developing country, and more concessions to enable us to have trading relationship with others. So I repeat, we cannot sign the current document. We will now have a keep talking, keep seeking an outcome that suits all parties. And only if New Zealand and Australia ultimately refuse to be flexible on the key uh, concerns of Fiji and other Pacific Island nations, will we walk away. I personally hope that the day never comes, that in this instance, the New Zealand government and the New Zealand parliament will come to see the justice of our position. <coughs> and I ask you all in the New Zealand business community to support us, because what we are asking for is uh, reasonable. It is fair. Ladies and gentlemen, I especially come to you today with an appeal to take a fresh look at the trade and investment opportunities in Fiji and to play your own part in the economic uh, reinvigoration of our relationship to match the new political and diplomatic re-engagement between our nations. Today you will hear a great deal uh, about the many benefits of investing in Fiji. Our position as hub of the Pacific, our rapidly improving infrastructure, better roads, uh, better airports, more efficient ports, our general connectivity and world-class telecommunications, our investment incentives, including duty concessions, investment allowance, and some of the lowest corporate and personal taxes in the region. As I keep saying at every opportunity, Fiji is open for business. And our people here today are keen to show you all the benefits, whether it is by Industry, Trade and Tourism Minister Fires Koyan, uh, our, uh, his permanent secretary, Shaheen Ali, our uh, Minister for Agriculture, uh, who is here with us, uh, the CEO of Investment Fiji, Goro, or our High Commissioner in Wellington, Philemoni Wangamara. All of these people are keen to explain the benefits of investing in Fiji or expanding your investment in Fiji. And I urge you all to take advantage of their expertise. Above all, ladies and gentlemen, I want to use these opportunities I did in Sydney to highlight the one thing that I guarantee you will never find anywhere else but Fiji and that is the quality of our people. As you know, Fijians are famous the world over for their friendliness and hospitality, uh, so much so that we proclaim ourselves at the, as the place where happiness finds you. We are even uh, happier than usual ourselves these days because for all the continuing challenges we face, uh, recovering uh, to Cyclone Winston, and the entire nation has been on unprecedented high after world champion rugby sevens team brought back Olympic gold from Rio. We uh, thank you. We are determined to harness that winning Olympic spirit and channel, uh, channel it into areas of national life. So well as well as our hospitality and friendship, there's another side to the Fijian people that I want to share with you all today as business people and that is our work ethic, loyalty, and eagerness to learn, to improve ourselves, and to work as a team, uh, like our Olympic heroes, for the common good, whether it is a nation, uh, whether it is a nation, a sporting team, or in a company. For all our investment incentives, for all our attractive tax rates, I believe it is the quality of our people that is the best reason to invest in Fiji or to grow your existing business. With the literacy rate uh, approaching 94%, our people are educated, English speaking, and becoming smarter all the time. My government's education revolution is our proudest achievement and the cornerstone of our nation's development. For the first time, we have introduced free schooling at primary and secondary level, along with uh, more scholarships for higher education and a tertiary loan scheme. As well as our three universities, we have established a network of technical colleges throughout the country to provide Fiji with the skills base it needs to prosper. And to provide you, as employers, with a workforce that is uh, more formally qualified than at any other time 
in Fijian history. So ladies and gentlemen, we have the people and we have the policies. And also, we also have the most stable period in Fijian history to enable investment to flourish. We have put behind us the lost years, the years in which we argued among, among us who uh, deserve, uh, sorry, we argued um, about who among us deserve more, rather than working together as one people to take, one, take our nation forward. With everyone now enjoying the common identity of being Fijian, there is a new sense of belonging in Fiji, a new sense of unity, a new sense of purpose. And with that feeling of inclusiveness, of taking everyone with us on our journey forward, we have entered a new era of confidence and sustained growth in the Fijian economy. Just as important, we are using our relative wealth not to prop up recurrent expenditure, as the previous governments did, but to invest in new infrastructure and to do much more to improve the lives of disadvantaged Fijians by providing them with such things as uh, subsidized electricity and free water and medicine, along with the nation's first ever social security pensions. All this has been possible because of my government's sound uh, management of the economy and business-friendly policies. In contrast to many other developing countries, we regard the private sector as vital partners in national development. And uh, those pro-business policies will continue, along with the zero tolerance for corruption and maintenance of law and order, that has always been the hallmark of my government. Also in stark contrast to many other developing countries, including in our own region. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I urge you all to view the investment opportunities that Fiji offers with fresh eyes. Whether you are looking for a new manufacturing base to develop a tourism venture, or an agriculture project. To take advantage of the growing opportunities in ICT, mining, food processing, or any other number, number of uh, areas. Fiji is open for business. Fiji is the place to be. It is easy access to surrounding countries, well-developed banking and financial institutions, state-of-the-art telecommunications, and above all, our educated workforce. The wonderful Fijian people, who are finally working together as one nation with their eyes firmly set on excellence, on transforming uh, our development country into a modern nation state, on achieving the greatness that we all know awaits us if we remain united and focused. Thank you all for your attendance uh, this morning and providing us with the opportunity to showcase Fiji. I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible and now have a great pleasure in declaring this Fiji Trade and Investment Symposium open. We never will ever and God bless you all. Utau tēnā koutou katoa. E te rangatira, Prime Minister Bani Marama, mai Fiji, haere mai ki Aotearoa. Nau mai, piki mai, koutou koto kawanatanga i tēnei rangi nui rawatu ki a mātou Aotearoa. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Sir, you are such a masterful speaker. I say that as someone who placed a great deal of accent in an earlier phase of my career as a politician in getting words right. Your description of rough and tumble with my boss, Prime Minister Key, is very apt. He is plain speaking and you don't mince your words. I last saw you, sir, at the Maori Fijian rugby game. At your prodding, my missus purchased a Fijian Maori All Black jersey. Unfortunately, it was made for a skinny Pākehā like Mark Ramsden. <laughs> it was not made for a generously developed Croatian Maori like Shane Jones. <laughs> On behalf of uh, my boss and uh, uh, Minister Murray McCulley, uh, welcome. Welcome to your ministers. I acknowledge your senior civil servants and in particular a great friend of ours, your High Commissioner. I also acknowledge members of the commercial community, both from Aotearoa New Zealand, but in particular those who have journeyed here from Fiji. 
This is not a long speech because the man who really needs to engage with you, both the men who need to do that are in the audience. But we have a very friendly and varied program for our distinguished guest, and I'm looking forward to taking him shortly to Moana Pacific, one of our significant Māori fishing enterprises, where he might find he's going to have two lunches in one day. <laughs> he's got a lunch with Minister Murray McCulley, but the Māoris will want to share with you the best crayfish in the Pacific. And rest assured, sir, it's in Aotearoa, not Fiji. <laughs> but uh, with the uh, spirit of Aroha, the friendship that we have over many years, and as I said to our own media last night, at the risk of sounding trite, let's sail into a rising sun. Uh, let's borrow an old expression, let bygones be bygones, collaborate, create wealth, generate jobs, and secure an economic history, uh, economic f future without being bogged down by history for our neighbourhood. Uh, I'm very eager to hear how we can make progress in respect of the pace of plus. I realise it is finicky, but we have our technical negotiators and have yours. And with the spirit that you've shown, in opening the conference of every confidence that we're going to create a favourable outcome. So, fellow Kiwis, visiting Fijian folk, and our distinguished Rangatira, as we say in our Māori language, the High Chief, it was a pleasure to be here this morning. Thank you for starting with the uh, national anthems of both countries. The next time you hear the Māori national anthem will be, will be when you watch the Aussies fail again. <laughs> Kia ora koutou katoa.